uh, real observation. So I think there's um, um, something to be gained by seeing a simulation of a real observation. Okay, so, um, so let me advance this to the slide where I want you to, yeah. So this is talking about the geocentering model, heliocentering model, and eventually, yeah. So um, <laughs> you should read about Galileo in, from the textbook. And some of the things that are highlighted in this, um, in these slides are observations that he made, the evidences that added to the, the heliocentric model of our solar system. And uh, I wanted to just to show you what that observation would look like if you are actually making it with a telescope. Um, so let me launch our uh, planetarium simulation software, Stellarium. This is the free one. You can, if you want to, you can download and install it on your own computer from stellarium.org. And, um, and we will make the same observation that, um, that or not quite the same or similar observation that Galileo made. Um, so we'll look at phases of Venus and see if uh, we see what's uh, highlighted here in the simulation software. Uh, with the simulation, there is always something that you have to be careful about, which is that you know, in the end, it's a simulation. There can be programming errors in the simulation. <laughs> um, so, it, so it's really more of a visualization tool than anything. So with a caveat, um, um, and I think uh, because uh, this is as a simulation, it's uh, necessarily somewhat limited it, um, in giving you the, uh, um, so it's not quite the same as actual real world observation. And I think one of the things that's uh, good to have a sense of is a sense of scale, how to relate what you see on the screen which may have vastly different sizes, depending on the size of your actual screen that you're seeing it. It's different if you're seeing it on a computer screen versus a cell phone screen. So um, when you're describing sizes in astronomical observation, we usually refer to angular size. Um, it's that uh, if you imagine your field of view, it's how big something appears to be. And I think it's good to have a uh, kind of an object in the sky that you can use as a reference. And the best one probably is the moon. It's large enough that you can actually with, with the unaided, uh, with the naked eyes, you can kind of see how big it appears to be and you can compare that to other sizes. So within this simulation, where's our moon? Um, yeah, there's the moon. So. Um, uh, so let me zoom in and I just uh, enabled a plugin um, called the Angular Measure. If you are using, the, if you've downloaded and used, you are using this software, where you enable it is under configuration window, plugins, angle measure, that's the plugin you want to enable. Once you have that enabled, then you can activate this um, by either toggling this button or using the shortcut control A. So angular size of the moon, as you can see here is, oh, wow. I think that letter is so blue. I can't see that against the background of the blue sky. So let me just turn off the atmosphere so that it's not a blue sky anymore. And I'll zoom in a little bit. Let's see, will the zooming in help? Or maybe zoom out. Okay, zoom out. Okay. So. So this angle measure is telling you what the size of the moon is. Uh, it's a zero degrees, um, so 360 degrees all the way around. So it's smaller than one degree. Uh, and these are giving you uh, what in angular measure, what's called a minute, arc minute and arc seconds. So this is about 32 arc minutes. And with the arc minutes and arc seconds, the, it's easiest to think of it like a, um, like a, with a clock analogy. So, um, so if you have a 60 minutes, that's one whole hour. So with arc minutes and arc seconds, if you have 60 arc minutes, that's one whole degree. So about, about 30 arc minutes, this is about half of a degree. So, so if you, Look at the sky and see the size of the moon. That's about uh, half a degree. 
and um, and it, it takes a little getting used to to um, kind of judge uh, angular size of something that you are seeing without an aid of anything. One kind of handy <laughs> way to do that is, I think this is linked from one of the slides as well, to, is to use your hand. You can, uh, there are certain um, kind of things on your hand that has about typical angular size when you hold it out at about arm's length. And I believe your pinky is about one degree um, in angular size when you hold it out at arm's length. You can actually try this out tonight. You know, if you see the moon, try uh, pointing your pinky at it, kind of see if you, you can cover the moon with your pinky. Uh, if, if you can cover it and a little bit more, then you know, that's about one degree. So, so with the size as reference, uh, what I want to do is just to look at the, uh, find the Venus and um, imagine that we are observing it through a telescope. So let me find the Venus this way. And I think I'm just gonna keep the atmosphere off. That's gonna, so this is one of the shortcuts I'm taking because if the atmosphere is on, then I have to be careful about what time of the day we are at. And uh, I, I think it's more distracting than educational. So I'll just keep the atmosphere off so that we, it's always at night or it looks like it's always at night. So I'll just look for Venus here and find it there okay and i'm going to turn on a button oh wait it's already on good so um so so this uh, option centers it on selected object and it actually attracts uh, the object that's uh, useful particularly when you are using a high powered zoom because um if uh, you're zoomed in and if your clock is running like real time then if you are not tracking the object, that object will just move across your field of view. And so turning this option is like simulating that you have a fairly decent uh, telescope mount that has a motorized mount that can be programmed to actually track the, uh, uh, the rotation of the celestial sphere. So <laughs> we'll pretend that so that we don't have to worry about tracking Venus uh, as the time passes. So technically right now it's during the day, the sun is out, uh, Venus is there. So um, if you're making a real observation of Venus, you would wait until the sun goes below the horizon so that you, it's dark enough for you to see Venus. Um, for now, we'll just cheat a little bit and just uh, look at what Venus might look like um, in a moderately powered telescope. So that's the view of Venus. If uh, you zoom in further, then the, it, you can see that it's not quite spherical it uh, uh, this is what we might call gibbous phase so he, there's a, this portion of venus so that's uh, um, that's uh, not illuminated by the sun so it appears dark so um what the textbook says is that this is the observation uh, galileo made that galileo observed the phases of venus and there are two things that um, that a careful observer would notice that if you correlate the phases of Venus with the uh, locate, relative location of the Venus and the sun, then um, that picture can be reconciled with the heliocentric model where the Venus is going around the sun. So we'll see if that's the case. And, um, and the, one of the claims made is that um, that the, the full Venus or the gibbous phase of Venus is, uh, has a smaller apparent size than the uh, half or crescent uh, Venus. So let's see if uh, simulation simulates that. So, so I guess this is the uh, gibbous phase of Venus. So um, I'm just gonna take out my angle measure and oh, it's already toggled and measure it. And um, this screen is very, these letters are very small. So I'm just gonna zoom in. I was testing this before. Um, let's see here. Okay. I hope you are seeing an um, enlarged screen um, with the letters. Yeah, we can see it. Yeah, good. <laughs> um, so it says the size of the Venus, approximately its diameter is zero degrees, zero minutes, and 10 seconds. So let me write that down. Uh, so 
so zero so give us um, zero degree uh, zero minute and 10.07 seconds okay now i'll have to find the time when uh, venus is in uh, venus is in a different relative position to the sun so this is where it's uh, nice that we have access to a planetarium we don't have to wait days for the right time of the year so um so let me have this uh if you center on venus center on the selected object and i'm just gonna um, advance the day uh, one by one and as i advance the day because it's, it's set to be centered on venus you will see the ground move you'll see the other things move we'll just let that be so as I advance the day, you see the distance between the Venus and the sun getting farther and farther away. Um, let's try to find the point where Venus is farthest from the sun and see if uh, uh, we can see what the phase looks like there. Is that about, I think this is close to where Venus is farthest from the sun. So that's uh, more than a month away <laughs> without planetarium. We would actually have to <laughs> wait until July 30th to make this observation in real life. This is one of the benefits of simulation that you can. Um... OK, that looks maybe a little bit different, but not as different as I thought it might be. Well, since we are here, let's uh, try making the. Uh... Oops. Wait. Okay. Uh, let's try making the measurement of its size. Uh, okay, it says um, zero degrees, zero arc minute, and 11.4 or 37 arc second. And it's still something I would describe as a kibbutz. So I won't write it down. Let me just uh, advance the day a little bit farther and see if uh, we'll see a different phase. Uh, It's hard to tell the distance between Sun and Venus. Yes, maybe I should have measured that. 37 degrees. Okay. Oh, <laughs> keeps moving. Still 37 degrees. Okay, uh, let's see what Venus looks like here. Uh, okay, it's, uh, you know, let me do it this way. I'm, since I'm centered on Venus anyway, I'm just gonna keep advancing the date until the phase looks like what I want it to be. So, so here's where this is with uh, Venus's quarter phase. This is like uh, Moon's first or third quarter. And let me just check what the distance. It, oh, I can't see the sun. Never mind. Um, so this is a different time of the year, almost uh, four months from now, when Venus is in different phase. And let's uh, see the angular size of Venus. So it says. Uh, I'm forgetting my shortcuts. Okay, so uh, zero degrees, zero arc minute, and twenty-one arc second um, quarter. I don't. Your textbook says half, but I'm just gonna say quarter because with the moon you're not supposed to say half moon. Twenty-one point thirty-one arc second. And uh, let's keep advancing the time and see if uh, we can see something different. Oh, wait. Um, so let's do it this way. I'm going to just keep the telescope centered on Venus, and we'll just keep advancing the time until it's at a crescent phase. And I think in this view, you can actually see the size of Venus change. So, so this is where most of the part of the Venus we are seeing is the unilluminated side and when you look at where the sun is in this view the sun is oh let me change the time of the day a little bit so that i can see the sun so so this is the relative location between sun and venus and we could uh, maybe make a sense of what we see in terms of the face of the venus if we imagine um, the sun is uh, farther away from us and the Venus is uh, kind of on the closer side, then you can imagine that the, the side of the Venus that's facing the sun will be illuminated, but the side that we can see from where we are, that's the, the darker side of Venus. So let's uh, keep just advancing the day 
until Venus moves across the sun. And when the Venus is on this side, it, yeah, you can see too, uh, this thin crescent here. So the side of the Venus that's facing the sun is getting illuminated. And as you keep um, going into the future, oops, oh wait, what did I do? Oh, uh, Venus is under the ground. <laughs> that's what I, uh, let me just start, change the time so that Venus is in the sky. Um, so that's uh, when Venus is at a uh, quarter phase again. And um, the distance fr from the sun and Venus is that's probably the farthest it has been so far. Let's see here, uh, about 45 degrees, so or 46 degrees. So that's the farthest distance you see between the sun and Venus. And, and all this uh, kind of makes sense within the within heliocentric model that it, um, if you kind of draw it or diagram then it makes sense that when Venus and the sun as seen from Earth are the farthest, that we about the half of the side of the Venus that we see would be the illuminated side. And um, I, I guess while we are here, we can make the measurement again to see. Oops, ah, I'm just trying to see. Okay, I see a 26.13 arc second. Um, so here, so this is, I don't know which quarter it is. I'll just call it quarter number two. Uh, zero degree, zero arc, um, arc minute, 26.13 arc second. And let's just to find it one more time. We'll try to find when um, Venus is in Gibbous phase. And this time we'll try to do a real measurement as in, um, I, I will turn the atmosphere back on and try to find the condition when we can actually locate Venus in the sky. It's because, you know, the Galileo <laughs> didn't have a satellite, he couldn't go, uh, he couldn't turn the atmosphere off. Okay, um, let's see here. Oh, maybe this will work. Um, so that's uh, fairly close to something that looks like a full circle, like a full moon. So um, on that day, so this is almost, uh, well, more than a year from now. Again, the simulation allows us to take a certain shortcuts that, um, I mean, <laughs> that's uh, kind of the um, challenging side of uh, real observation that sometimes you have to be very patient to wait until the right time of the year. Um, but I don't think I'll be able to, let's see, would I? Okay, so it's not gonna be on the setting side, maybe on the rising side, we can get Venus to rise before the sun rises. Okay, so something like this condition, is Venus gonna be visible at all? Um, yeah, I think uh, so. So just before sun rises, you can uh, train your telescope on Venus on that day and see that uh, uh, Venus is at, at um, uh, kind of full phase. And if you measure the angular size of Venus then, then the size you would measure is um, about uh, not, well, 9.36 arc second. So compare that to what the other sizes were, you can see the, oops, I, about 9.33, okay. Um, the full um, zero degree, zero arc minute, 9.33 arc second. So it's a, uh, quite clearly changing size rather dramatically. It changes by almost uh, as much as a factor of three. So for a careful observer who um, kind of makes necessary markings on the telescope so, um, so they can relate what they are seeing on the telescope with the actual sizes, this is something that, um, th that can be done with the care. And 
I think this is why it's important that um, uh, Galileo was the first uh, um, user of telescope in astronomy, because this kind of observation was, um, it's not possible with, um, with the unaided eye or unaided observation. You can really only see the face of Venus through a telescope. So that's one thing I want you to uh, demonstrate what, um, um, so how one would uh, make the observation that's uh, described in the text of again, what it would look like to someone using an instrument to look at one of the planets. 